The name of this video is Maxwell P. Local case two solenoidal. In our previous video, we encountered case one, which is the differential form of Maxwell's equations for the magnetostatic field B. Now we want to consider, as in the case of the electrostatic field E, also in the case of B, the presence of discontinuity. So regions where the current is distributed over a surface which represents a discontinuity in space. For an introduction to this concept, which again is case two, you can refer again to video 20, again for an introduction to this concept, which is again case two, the local form. So as always, we consider a steady current that is a DC current. But this time, instead of considering a DC current which is distributed in a volume of space, this current is only distributed on a sheet, like just on this sheet of paper. It's only on this paper, nowhere else in 3D. Okay, so we have a steady current. with a vector density j underscore s, where s is for surface, because now it only lives on a surface. This js, which is again only on a surface, s is for surface, is a discontinuous function, is not c naught in general, in capital omega, which is the entire three-dimensional Euclidean space. Since it's not continuous, we cannot use case one, which is the differential form. We cannot. We are not allowed to do that, because it's not well-defined curl, uh, divergent, etc. not well defined in this region. Okay, so let us catch a sheet over which there is a current density Js on the surface. This is our region capital sigma, which is a conducting sheet, for example, on which we do have a current intensity, let's begin with that, on the surface, Is, for example, following the shape of this capital sigma, this continues because always in VC, this effectively has to be part of a circuit if you want, so I'm not going to sketch the whole uh, current intensity, which is a scalar, I, S. And again, also in the case of the intensity, which is a scalar associated with J, S, I call it subscript S for surface. Okay, so now let's consider a point capital P, for example, this point here, along this uh, I, S, the tangent at that point is where JS lives. So JS is on the tangent here to this curve, so it's this vector here. This is JS, the current density vector on the surface, which again is tangent to IS, and it only resides on the surface. And this is our point capital P, I will specify it later. We're gonna need it also for the next video. Okay, so now with this in mind, let us consider a local Cartesian coordinate system. So Js is, will be on the plane xy, but for now the only thing we're interested in it really is uh, at z axis of this type, which is normal to the surface at this point capital P, which is also the origin of this Cartesian coordinate system. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sketch in this case the xy plane, only the uh, z axis, okay? All right, so that's the origin right there. So this is the z-axis. Now, in order to study, as always, the local properties case two of Maxwell's equations, we need to consider, uh, if you are understanding here, in this case, investigating the solenoidal property, a coin-type surface, which resides slightly above and slightly below these uh, uh, two regions of space, which are separated by capital sigma, and I'm going to call them region one above and region two below capital sigma. So my 
um, contact surface is going to be slightly above and slightly below. So slightly in region one, slightly in region two, and it's going to look as follows. The trace of this is a cylinder, and so the trace on the sigma plane in pro close proximity of this point capital P is going to look like this. Okay, it's a trace of a cylinder. And then above in region one, it's visible here in front of our eyes. Looks like this. And below, it's invisible. It's on the region uh, two. Great. So in this case, uh, let me sketch. This is the diameter. Let me sketch to make it more clear. I'm sketching in this fashion. So this is the diameter of the bottom one. Great. Now, in this case, we will discuss the various surfaces which make up the cylinder in a minute. Before doing that, let's put all our vectors. So first of all, all the unit vectors which we want to use in this case. So the normal unit vector n is going to be, as always, this vector here. Okay? So, in one of the videos, probably video 20, I briefly discussed the fact that in the case of the magnetostatic field B, we use an opposite convention compared to the one we use for the electrostatic field E, where n religiously goes from 2 to 1. Well, this is true, but right now, I, not to confuse you, I want to keep using the same notation we have used in video 20. That is, I want to keep using the fact that n here goes from 2 to 1. So here there is a caveat, and the caveat is that eventually in 342, this is for 342, Typically, people use the opposite convention 1 to 2 for a reason which I will explain later. You can absolutely choose any of the two as long as you keep all the equations consistent, but for a reason that will become apparent in 342, people like to invert a final result which I will show in the next video. And so, you may want to switch from 2 to 1 to 1 to 2. In fact, I want you to discuss about that in Piazza after the next video, as a matter of fact. All right, so but keep it in mind. So now, for now, we keep it always from 2 to 1, like for video 20. We're not going to change it for now. We're going to change it later. All right, so for simplicity. So this is our n, which goes from 2 to 1. So I'm not going to put 2 to 1 here. I keep it here only, but it's implicit. That's our typical definition. And so the other vectors which we have at hand here, of course, on the um, top surface here, let's indicate this top surface like this. There is, uh, so n, this one is in the center, of course, in the top surface, this is what we will call n simply 1, and on the bottom surface, this is what we call n2, and n point, points in the same direction as n1. Now, on this base here, on this top surface, there can be any arbitrary electric magnetic field, any arbitrary magnetic field B in region 1. Similar down here, there can be any arbitrary magnetic field B, which we don't know anything about, in region 2. And they stem from the centers, if you want, of these two areas here. Great. So we have the B fields in the two bases. What about the other surface? Of course, there will be also a normal unit vector uh, on the lateral surface. So the normal unit vector will be something like, uh, let's say, it looks like that. NL, lateral. And we'll try to make sure that we don't care about that. And there will be any arbitrary BL on the lateral surface of this cylinder as well, for the magnetic field. And again, we know nothing about 1, 2, and 3, B1, B2, and BL, sorry. Okay, so these are all the vectors we need. We have all the unit vectors. We have our convention n uh, to 1, which is n, same as n1. We have our b vectors, which we don't know anything about. Let's name all these surfaces. So the uh, top base, we're going to call it capital sigma 1, because it's in region 1. And so the cylinder is the union of this with the lateral, cylind uh, the lateral surface capital sigma L, which is the lateral surface of this cylinder. 
union capital sigma 2. Okay, this one is capital sigma coin, the coin type surface, which is the overall cylinder here. Great. Now that we have all that, the idea is we want to study in proximity of this point capital P, and now let us write this point capital P right there. Let me move it a little bit aside so it's easier to see. This is point capital P right there. All right. We want to be in proximity. We cannot use the differential form. We can always use, we can always use the integral form of the solenoidal property, which tells us that the uh, surface integral on any closed surface capital sigma, in this case capital sigma coin, which is a closed surface of B dot and A, has to be equal to zero because the field is solenoidal. And this, in this case, we can split into three integrals the flux through the top surface capital sigma 1, and I don't put the integral, which is exactly the same, plus the flux through the lateral surface capital sigma L, and plus the flux through the uh, bottom surface capital sigma 2. All right. Now, in order to solve the problem, again, the idea is we want to squeeze down this coin to be as close as possible to this point capital P. So what is the condition we are going to do? We are going to go in the limit for the height of this coin, which is this quantity here, h. We want the height of the coin to go to zero, so to become infinitesimally small, okay, to go to zero. So that we can, by means of this physical assumption, which makes sense, we can arbitrarily choose it to be extremely small, so it's just a tiny bit above and below the region 1 and 2 respectively, this coin. So in this case, the integral on capital sigma L clearly does not contribute, even though we know nothing about the L, we are basically removing completely the flux with the center surface under this condition. The other fundamental condition, the other physical condition here, is that we want to make sure that B1 and B2 respectively are constant on capital sigma 1 and sigma 2. How do we do that? Well, we want to choose the area delta A of capital sigma 1 and 2, which are the same because this is a cylinder, such that the 1, 2 are constant on sigma 1, capital sigma 1 and 2, respectively. Constant being the keyword here. If they are constant, I can take them outside the sign of integral, and therefore, under these conditions, we simply obtain that the integral on capital sigma 1 plus the integral on capital sigma 2 of B dot NBA, in this case, is nothing but B1 dot N1 times delta A. It's constant, so we can take it outside the sign of integral. The integral is, of course, delta A plus b2 dot uh, n2 times delta a and this quantity has to be equal to zero so that delta a and delta a already can cancel it out under this limit condition here it also implies this also implies that n1 is exactly the same as n whereas n2 is minus n they coincide now they go to the same point and these are the signs which we get under this condition, finally, we obtain that this integral here, the integral on capital sigma 1 plus the integral on capital sigma 2, which is the only two terms we're interested in, left over from this limit, is going to be, we can factor out an n, so n1 is n, dot it, is commutative, b1, n2 is minus n, so minus b2, equal to zero. In this case, this is our case two local form for B in the case of the solenoidal property. This means that the normal components of the magnetic state field B are continuous in proximity of any point P on this surface capital sigma, where there is a current density Js on the surface. And remember that in the case of the vector study field, the normal components are discontinuous because of Gauss's theorem. There would be sigma over epsilon not here. In this case, it's not because this is a solenoidal field. 
So it comes from exactly this equation up here, from this Maxwell equation. So to summarize this video, we investigated the Maxwell equations for the magnetostatic field B, local case 2, in the case of the Sonnenhalder property. We define a current density Js, which is a vector residing on a surface only, not in the volume, so it's discontinuous therein, at any point capital P uh, on the surface capital sigma. We consider a coin type that is a cylinder slightly above and below this capital sigma centered in capital P. With the convention, we go again from 2 to 1. We use this on another property, which we can always uh, use, whereas the differential form you cannot in this case. We split it up into the three components, the three terms, surface, surface, another surface, base, base, another surface. In the limit h goes to 0, the other surface does not contribute. If we choose suitably delta a to be small enough so that b1 and b2 are constant on these surfaces respectively, we can reduce this integral to this very simple fact form here. We can thus remove delta a in the limit. The ends are related by these minus signs, and so we obtain that the normal components of b are continuous. That's it.